Okay, so I haven't really done a dedicated PlayStation VR video in a while. In fact, I think the last time I did one was back in 2016, when the platform originally came out. And since then, a lot has changed. I mean, it's two plus years, the device has certainly matured, gotten a lot better. And it really is getting to the point where I think you should consider buying one. And to be fair, we're not going to spend 10 plus minutes making this a PlayStation VR promotional campaign. There's certainly some negatives and we're going to go over those as well. But it is a situation where if you weren't sold on it back in 2016, maybe you will be now. See, the thing is, back in October 2016 when PlayStation VR first came out, the reservations many people felt were certainly warranted. It was brand new, unfamiliar tech to many that was essentially launching as a platform by itself. With a steep starting price of $400 and requiring a PS4 to begin with, it was easy to understand why people weren't so quick to throw money at it, especially given the circumstances of virtual reality. It's like asking someone to buy a car without letting them test drive it. If anything, it's probably more comparable to say you're asking somebody to buy a car and they've never driven a car to begin with. Virtual reality is a really tough sell when you've never even tried it, and this was something Sony was vehemently aware of. You've got to have people actually try it firsthand to understand how immersive and incredible of a gaming experience it can be. No amount of promises, gameplay, or testimonials are going to relay what it's like. So when you have a hurdle like that, on top of a high price, with requiring a PS4, and it essentially being a brand new platform with its own set of launch games, it's understandable that the adoption rate has been slow going. But fast forward to the making of this video in the first half of 2019, and you'll notice that two of these hurdles have been rectified. Because it's been two years, PlayStation VR, like any platform, has now matured to the point of coming in at a lower price point with a vast library of content. The passing of time is indeed a gamer's best friend when looking to buy into a system they've never owned before. For. PlayStation VR can now easily be had for as low as $250 brand new, and that's almost always going to include the necessary PS4 camera and two games. Bump that price up to the $350 range, and you'll find retail bundles with two PlayStation Move controllers, which you'll certainly want to grab at some point as they are required for some games and enhance the experiences of many more. Speaking of which, can we just pause for a second and recognize that PlayStation Move was announced in June of 2009, 10 years ago during Sony's E3 press conference? And do you remember watching that press conference and gamers and the video game industry across the world, like everybody was just reacting to this thing and thinking, oh, Sony, wh what are you doing? A PlayStation motion controller being demoed as a tennis racket and a sword, and this was at the height of Nintendo Wii sales, and yes, PlayStation Move was probably are indeed well before Sony ever caught wind to what Nintendo was doing at the Wii prior to its public reveal, but it's the simple fact that PlayStation Move came after, so it never really broke that identity crisis, especially when you have games like Sports Champions or being shoehorned into games like Killzone, SOCOM, Bioshock Infinite, just never really worked out, but would you have believed in 2009 that we'd still be using this today, 10 years later on PS4 with virtual reality, mind you? I think it's much better used today for that case, but man, I don't know if we should say like that's a true testament of time or if this thing really just needs to be updated, and to be fair, it totally does need to be updated, and it, we probably will get a PlayStation Move 2.0 of some kind on PS5 whenever Sony decides to show us that, but uh, yeah, I think it's much better used today with PlayStation VR. The unnoticed side effect of PlayStation Move still being relevant 10 years later is that it's held its value. Because it's still being used today on PS4 with PlayStation VR, you're still seeing used mini USB Move controllers being sold regularly for more than $20. People are picking these controllers up to use them today on PSVR, which just as an FYI, brand new Move controllers today come with a micro USB and they do not work on PS3, so if you ever find yourself buying Move for PS3 specifically, make sure you buy the correct one. But this whole discussion of Move and its retained value brings me to this greater point in that PlayStation VR itself is very valuable. If you buy into it and you feel that it's just not for you, you can get a lot of your money back by posting it on a third party site. So at the very least, you don't have to feel as though you're taking this huge risk buying something that you might not like. Hell, if you don't mind the more personal aspect of the device, buy PlayStation VR used from eBay, and if need be, list it back on there for what you paid. You'd only eat the eBay fees at that point. In fact, here's an extra tip. Assuming the seller shipped it in a cost-effective box that wasn't overly weighed down, keep the box and packaging materials for a little bit so if you decide you don't like it, you have all the packaging ready to go. I actually do this a lot, as you can see we're in my living room and uh, yeah, I got a lot of box just in case, you know what I'm saying? But that's actually Melissa's house and uh, yeah, living room's basically turned into a, uh, a storage closet at this point. Now, monetary value aside, here's the real safety net. 
Sony had a pretty rough reputation with their PlayStation Vita support. They spent the first two years releasing some first party games, giving the Vita some stage time at press events, and that was really about it. So while Vita was a fantastic handheld with great games, it was a tough sell for people when you see the manufacturer not giving it the support that it needs. If there's one thing about PlayStation VR that everybody can agree on, it's that Sony supports the living hell out of it. To the point where it's beginning to annoy regular PS4 users that have no interest in VR and they're tired of seeing it. It's almost ironic, but it really does give that reassurance that two years onward, it's a great time to buy. There's a ton of games on the horizon. Sony is constantly filing new patents related to VR tech, and most importantly, the headset you buy today has recently been confirmed to be playable on Sony's next generation PlayStation, presumably PS5. That in itself is fantastic news, because while yes there will probably be a next generation version of PlayStation VR, at the very least your current headset can still be used, and all of the games that you buy today will still be playable. But another key factor many are also overlooking is Sony's dominance in the VR space. While some may say PSVR isn't doing all that well, it's actually the market leader in the premium lineup against HTC Vive and Oculus, with over 4 million headsets sold. With Sony securing all these patents and supporting VR like crazy, you have to imagine that it's only going to get better from here. And what does here look like? We've talked a lot about the value and the future of the unit, but realistically, what does today get you? As it stands, I think you're finally seeing some prime examples of just how fun, immersive, and compelling PlayStation VR can be. Initially, a lot of these games were more static experiences, where you don't actually move around and all the content is seen in under an hour, but today we've got games that, well, they're really considered more full-blown games. Skyrim VR, Resident Evil 7, Borderlands 2, these are perhaps the best examples. They're games that are very familiar, but can be played completely in virtual reality, and it's one hell of an experience to finally be inside those worlds. These are the kind of games that are proof of concept. To ease that transition of someone who initially would never care for VR, because naturally people People dismiss experiences they can't relate to. Oblivion is out. Sentries, what do you see? It's in the The thing is though, original VR titles are also blossoming and finding their place. Games like Beat Saber, Farpoint, Doom VFR, Firewall Zero Hour, Job Simulator, Moss, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Creed Rise to Glory, and so, so, so much more. And you know, one thing I'm really starting to notice with PlayStation VR is that it has the same magic from 2006. You know what I'm talking about. The first time you and a group of friends played a Wii together, you all had a blast. That was the catalyst. A lot of people were first exposed to Wii in a group setting with friends, and it was just a fantastic time. That social experience is what got so many people into it, and ironically, despite VR being an enclosed experience, it's becoming social just as Sony planned it. You're seeing friends together playing PSVR and taking turns, laughing and reveling in how cool the tech is. Now, yes, the barrier of entry is still much higher, and I'm not saying PSVR is suddenly going to see a massive jump in sales just like Nintendo did back in 2006, but the magic is there. Slowly but surely, every time people try it, they always have a great time. <laughs> Now let's get to the negatives. Here's one of them. The setup is a mess. Uh, wires everywhere. So when you're doing PlayStation VR, you really have to consider where you're going to put this in terms of your play area and your room. So for me, I think I've found a pretty good balance here, which is that I keep it on the bottom shelf of my TV and whenever I need it, obviously I kind of made a mess here on purpose, but basically whenever I decide to play it, I keep most of that tucked under there. I keep this whole area free. It's a little bit dusty, excuse me, but I keep that whole area free and without having to think about it, I just plop it in plop it out one wire just to hold it and move it around freely but for my space specifically it's a bit cramped as you can see I've got my desk right here with my computer and I do that uh, in close proximity to do YouTube videos and gameplay recording and things like that but because of this my reach is severely limited when doing things like PlayStation move so I often hit the desk a lot uh, my vertical is also a bit limited in this regard and so sometimes a lot of the games just flat out don't work for this particular space and I have to take the whole setup out to the living room which as you can see I don't really like 
<laughs> moving all this. And then there's the general fatigue of the device. Even if you don't experience motion sickness, you really should take a break every hour or two hours. And I know some people play longer than that, but you do want to avoid that eye strain, that exhaustion, especially if it's a move game or if it's using a lot of head tracking. It tires you out a bit. You do have to have the energy. You do have to be in the mood for it, which I know sounds off-putting to want to be in the mood to move around like that, but that's kind of how it is. And that's actually why I've been gravitating more towards the games that just let you sit down, be in that world, and use a controller. Although, it's also because of my setup like we just went over. But it is a thing where once you are in the mood for it, you still have a really great time. So if you're on board now, here's some quick tips to get you started. Definitely get those move controllers, you'll need them for some of the best experiences. The aim controller, I wouldn't buy right away until you know you're really enjoying VR, but then definitely get that as well because it really feels like firing a gun and it's just a blast. Be sure to visit the PlayStation Store and go to the free section. There's actually a lot of free VR content you could spend all day playing with, from live experiences to videos. And speaking of videos, if you have any 3D Blu-ray movies, PSVR can play those and reproduce the 3D effect beautifully. So try that out. Be conservative with your playtime so you can avoid sickness or eye strain. And perhaps most importantly, invite some friends over who have never tried it. Watch how much fun you have. Order a pizza for the night and just have a good time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news reviews and updates that are here on YouTube. And also follow along on Twitter at Mystic Ryan and tweet at me. Let me know if you bought PlayStation VR because of this video. If you didn't, if I'm wrong, please let me know because I'm pretty much wasting all my time on Twitter anyway, so might as well have some things to read. Other than that, though, that's pretty much it. I will see you all in my next video, and you take it easy.